All right, it is six o'clock here in Denver, Colorado. Thank you all so, so much for joining me this afternoon. Um, it could be a little bit before dinner time, dinner time or after time, depending on where you are in the country. Uh, but I certainly do appreciate you taking the time to join me uh, this afternoon uh, during our scholarship season kickoff event. Uh, we're super excited uh, to welcome you tonight. Uh, my name is Juan Ruiz and I am the, the the scholarships manager here at the American Indian College Fund. And I'm super excited to get to hang out with you this afternoon and tell you all about our amazing scholarship opportunities and how you can apply for them to be considered for an award for the upcoming 23-24 academic year. Before we get started, I do wanna let you know that I have two colleagues here on the background monitoring the chat, Delfina and Kaylin. Uh, they're fantastic and they're really knowledgeable about our scholarship programs. So as we run through the slides, if you have any questions at all, please uh, drop your questions in the chat. Kaylin and Delfina will be monitoring, monitoring them and trying to answer as many of you as you can. Depending on how much engagement we get on the chat tonight, we may not be able to get to everyone. However, there is gonna be a, a Q&A section at the very end of the presentation where you will be able to engage with me and ask me questions here broadcasted on the screen. And I'll be able to have a back and forth with you about those questions. So if you drop a question on the chat and my team is not able to answer it, uh, please, uh, don't be discouraged, hang on till the end of the event and you'll be able to uh, broadcast your question here uh, on, um, on the uh, Mentimeter event, okay? So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Thank you all very much. And I can see that some of you are raising your hands. I also wanna let you know that I am not able to uh, allow you to engage with me via audio. But again, if you have any questions, please drop your questions in the chat. And um, if we're not able to get to those questions, uh, you will have the opportunity to ask me during the Q&A uh, section at the end of the presentation. All right, so let's get started. All right, so every year, the American Indian College Fund gives away millions of dollars in scholarship funds to students throughout the United States. The, the scholarship application for the 2023-2024 academic year is available and live as of today. The deadline to apply and be considered for an award for an award is May 31st of this year. So it's coming up here in um, you know, three months or so. You can learn more about our scholarship opportunities, how to apply, who's eligible, and all sorts of other information how to, about how to strengthen your application if you go to collegefund.org forward slash scholarships. Delfina is gonna be dropping that link on the chat. You may be wondering who does, uh, who funds our scholarship uh, programs and our scholarship opportunities? Well, we have partnerships with uh, private donors and corporations throughout the United States. Here on the screen, you can see a handful of the different donors that contribute to our scholarship programs. We're very thankful for their support. You may be wondering, how do I apply for the AT&T scholarship or the Coca-Cola scholarship or Costco or Toyota? Well, uh, we have a very wide portfolio of scholarships. When you submit one application, the application gathers all of the information about who you are to determine your eligibility for the different programs that we offer. What that means is that you don't have to go and apply individually for any one of these programs. You submit one application, and with that application, we consider you for all of the different um, scholarship programs that we have in our portfolio. Before you get started on the application, I do want you to think about uh, your uh, the different eligibility uh, requirements that we have for our scholarship programs to ensure that you are indeed eligible. First of all, in order to apply and uh, be eligible, you must be a U.S. citizen. You also, be, you, must, you also must be an enrolled member of a federal or a state recognized tribe. If you are not an enrolled member, but your parents or your grandparents are an enrolled member, you would be considered a descendant. Descendancy only goes back two generations, your parent or your grandparent. You will need to provide proof of tribal enrollment or proof of descent uh, when you submit the application. 
And you can learn more about the different requirements to prove your enrollment or dissent on our website, collegefund.org forward slash scholarships. You also need to have a minimum cumulative GPA of 2.0. And of course, you must be uh, attending an accredited not-for-profit university in the fall of 2023 and the spring of 2024. Lastly, you must also be a full-time enrolled student. There are three different kinds of documents that I would love for you to gather before you start your application. Having these documents on hand, or rather in your computer, before you start the application is going to expedite your experience submitting your application. The first document is a professional photo. Photos are shared with our donors. They are excited to get to know the students that their programs fund. And so in our reports, we share uh, your pictures with our donors. We encourage you to not take selfies and to not crap yourself out of a group picture. Submit a picture that you are excited and proud to share with the person that funded your scholarship. You also need to submit proof of your tribal enrollment or your descent. If you are an enrolled member of a federal or a state recognized tribe, you can submit your um, certificate of Indian blood or your tribal enrollment card. If on the other hand, you are a descendant and you yourself, is, you yourself are not an enrolled member of a federal or a state recognized tribe, but your parents, one of your parents, biological parents or grandparents is enrolled in one of those tribes, you can submit their tribal enrollment documentation, their CIB or their tribal enrollment card, along with your birth certificate. The birth certificate allows you to allows us to draw your connection between the connection between you, your parent, or your grandparent. We also need you to submit an unofficial copy of your transcript, the most recent copy uh, available. Um, if you go to the office of the registrar at your campus, whether you're in high school or a college student, they can supply you with a copy of this for free. And it does not need to be an official copy. It can be uh, an unofficial copy that is just fine. So before you can submit on the application, I encourage you to gather those three items so that when you hit those uh, upload fields in the application, you can simply plug them in and continue on. One of my colleagues, Kaylin or uh, Delfina, is going to drop a link on the chat uh, for our application walkthrough video. We're not going to watch that video today because the rest of my presentation is going to be walking you through the steps on how you need to complete the application to apply. However, this video is a great point of reference. You can go back and watch after the event in case you get stuck. When you reach the application portal, you're going to be met with this screen. If you are a returning applicant, please take the time to not create an account and log in with your existing credentials. So take the time to find what those credentials are. If you forgot your password, you can use the forgot your password feature that you see beneath the password field to reset your password and then email. That would be your username. If you are sure that you previously applied, but you don't remember your credentials, please email us. We would love to help you find those credentials so that you don't create duplicate applications, which is going to impact your eligibility. If you are a brand new applicant, you will have to click on the sign up button and make yourself an account, a simple username and a password. Once again, it is very important that if you are a returning user, you do not make a new account, try to reset those credentials. And if you don't remember them, email us. You can email us at college fund, sorry, you can email us at scholarships at collegefund.org. I believe Kellen is also going to drop uh, our email address on the chat here shortly. Next, after you create the account, you will be uh, entered into the portal. You need to complete a profile first, which is that top bar uh, at the top that says profile. The profile, you're gonna provide some basic biodemographical information about who you are, your name, your sex, your gender, 
uh, your travel enrollment documentation goes in that field, uh, your date of birth. So all of those aspects of who you are uh, that, um, that relate back to kind of your demographics, you need to create that profile in order to move on with the application. Once you create the profile step, you, your screen is going to update and you're gonna see some text here giving you some directions and some application cards. This is the screen of what, this is what things will look like for new users. If you are a returning user and you submitted a scholarship application, this 23-24 um, academic year, whether you were selected or not, when you log in, you're gonna find two application cards. One of them is gonna be labeled for 2022-2023, the current academic year, and you're gonna find your award status on that card. It might say not awarded, it might say enrollment uh, confirmation spring, or some different message. You will also find a, a second application card labeled for 2023-2024. That is the application for the next academic year. That is the one that you need to submit by May 31st to be considered for a scholarship. When you click on the application card, so whether you are a new user or a returning user, when you click on the application card, you're gonna find four different steps. You're gonna find the scholarship application. We're gonna go into that in just a minute. You're also gonna find extracurriculars, honors and distinctions and resume. In the scholarship application, you're gonna be prompted with some reflection questions. These questions are an outstanding chance for you to tell us more about yourself. We at the College Fund and our scholarship application reviewers are excited to get to know you. And these questions, or your responses to these questions rather, is your chance to let us uh, enter your life a little bit, for you to share more about who you are and what makes you unique. This is the place in the application where you're this is the place where you're gonna be scored. Applications are scored by a group of reviewers that are not affiliated with the college fund. And this applicate, these responses uh, have the most weight during the, um, the scoring process. So uh, I encourage you to tell us more about who you are and what your unique story is. Please answer the questions clearly and completely and thoroughly. Focus on descriptive language, give us fluid ideas and make sure that you are communicating uh, who you are, what challenges you've overcome to go to college, and how you wanna give back to the Native American community. I encourage you to draft those responses on a Word document and have somebody proofread them and then submit them. The three reflection questions you are gonna to have to answer are, what challenges have you overcome to attend college? What are your educational and career goals? And how will this scholarship help you achieve them? And the last one is, how will you use your education to impact your native nation or Indian country? Each response must be at least 100 words and no more than 300. We also have a unique scholarship opportunity for those of you that are descendants of boarding school survivors. If this doesn't apply to you, you can simply click on the no radio button and then this will bypass this question. But if you are a descendant of a boarding school survivor, we have a unique scholarship opportunity for you. And in order to be considered for that unique opportunity, you need to indicate yes, that you are indeed a descendant of a boarding school survivor. And you need to answer that reflection question there. It's important to note that once you submit your application, you cannot go back and make edits to your application. So I encourage you to start filling out the application. You can save your work you and click on the save button and that'll save your work. You can, you can return to it and answer uh, or continue filling your application later. Just make sure you submit it before May 31st. But between now and then, whether you submit it today or a couple of weeks down the road or, uh, before May 31st, anytime between now and then, you're gonna have the same odds of being awarded or being considered for, for an award, right? I also wanna encourage you to please take the time to give us good reflection responses. 
Every year we get more applicants that we can fund. That is true for every and any scholarship provider out there. Every scholarship provider receives more applicants that they have money for. So it is your reflection questions and the details about your extracurriculars and your honors and distinctions that make you stand out um, against the competition, if you will, or other applicants. So please do take the time to fill out the application thoroughly and well um, so that you can increase your chances of being awarded a scholarship. Let me go back here one more time. I'm gonna go back to the previous screen. I also wanna draw your attention to the extracurriculars and honors and distinction steps. So after you complete the scholarship application, that step is gonna say completed, and then you can move on to extracurriculars and honors and distinctions. This is again, your chance to tell us more about you in addition to those reflection questions. So we wanna know extracurricular activities. Are you involved? Anything and everything outside of the classroom can count as an extracurricular activity. Whether you are a current high school student who is involved in key club and the football team, or you are a current college student who is involved in a couple of clubs. Um, if you are involved in cultural ceremonies for your tribe, those definitely count as either extracurricular activities or honors and distinctions. If you are a parent, um, and you know uh, you have a job and you're raising kids, those are extracurricular activities as well. You might also have honors and distinctions to highlight from your job. So please think really broadly about these two um, um, steps. And don't be shy, brag about yourself. You're awesome. You've got great things to share about who you are and what makes you unique. So don't hold back, okay? The more that you share about you, the more that we'll get to know you and the higher of a score you're likely to receive during the scoring process of your application. You may be wondering, well, how can I make sure that I uh, put together good, strong um, reflection responses? We have a link on our website uh, for uh, application tips and Q&A. Um, Kaylin or Delfina are gonna drop that link on the chat soon. When you go on there, please take the time to review those different options and fields that we display on the website for you. You can find our advice on how to craft reflection responses, how to format them, the differences between the profile and the application. And if you're still stuck on how you can prove dissent or enrollment in the tribe, we also give you some help with that on the website. So be sure to help to check out this, uh, this link. It is very, very helpful. Now, we also partner with 35 uh, accredited tribal colleges and universities throughout the country. If you haven't heard of a, uh, a TCU or a tribal college or university, these are accredited institutions that offer vocational, bachelor's, and graduate degrees. They are outstanding options for any student out there that wants to get a higher education, and their class offerings are infused with traditional knowledge. You can go on our website, my, uh, my colleague, Kaylin or Delfina, are going to drop a link where you can learn more about TCUs, tribal colleges and universities. If you are attending a TCU, please be sure to indicate that when you're selecting your school of attendance on the application, because TCU or tribal college and university enrolled students are eligible for some additional uh, scholarship opportunities that other students who are enrolled in mainstream schools are not eligible for. So if, for example, you are attending an Nakoda or Haskell or Diné or Navajo Technical University, you are eligible for a couple more uh, scholarship opportunities than someone who's going to say Montana State or Arizona State. Those would be mainstreams, right? So please be sure to check out that link that Kaylin and Delfina are dropping from the chat to learn more about tribal colleges and universities. They're outstanding options. They are fully accredited. accredited. Uh, like I said, the, the class offerings are much smaller than traditional colleges, uh, mainstreams. Uh, they also tend to be much, much cheaper. And their course offerings and the overall campus community um, offers um, uh, an experience that is more infused with traditional knowledge, Native American knowledge. Many of our scholarship opportunities or awards 
also come with additional student support. When we, the college fund, invest in our, in our um, scholars and our awarded students, we invest in you with more than just money. We care about your overall success and your overall well-being. So many of our scholarships include coaching support and resources. We pair you up with a college success coach and you two develop a relationship throughout the years in college. And they help you with transitioning to school, study skills, and how to manage you know, the, uh, the new life of what of things are like in college. We also offer internship placements and career planning resources. So many students as they near the end of their undergraduate experience, uh, they begin to look for work. And so we have some resources to help you find internship and career uh, opportunities after you graduate with your, um, with your degree. We also invite many students to different conferences and we offer different events that we invite scholars to. In addition to that, scholars can also apply to be a college fund ambassador, which opens a, brand, a different opportunity for folks to engage with the college fund and with other external uh, stakeholders. So you basically become an ambassador for the college fund. It's a really neat opportunity. You get to travel throughout the country and meet a, meet a lot of different people. So it's a really, really neat and awesome opportunity. You can find all of the great resources the College Fund offers. Uh, Kaylin or Dafina are gonna drop a link to these different resources, but please be sure to check them out. Our Native Pathways guidebook is uh, geared toward high school students who are preparing to enter college. The Connect and the Focus 2 platform are geared toward students who are currently in college and they are looking for networking, internship and job opportunities and career and education advancement. advancement. Similarly, the Career Pathways Guidebook is geared toward those students who are already in college and they're looking to start developing or advancing their careers. We have a ton of resources for you if you are not yet ready to start applying for a scholarship but you want to stay in touch. We would love to send you um, our monthly newsletter where we highlight other scholarship um, opportunities and other scholarship providers outside of the college fund. You can sign up for that at that link that you see there. My colleague, Kaylin Ardofina, are also gonna drop that link on the chat so you can sign up. Be sure to check this out and definitely be sure to check out the different scholarship providers that we highlight. I highly encourage all students to submit multiple scholarship applications with different providers. The scholarship application process is competitive. Like I said before, uh, all providers out there receive more applicants that they have funding for, so you wanna to try to apply to as many scholarships as you are eligible for. And this is a great way to learn about new and other opportunities, scholarship opportunities that are available. We encourage you to follow us on social media and stay up uh, on, the, um, on, our, uh, on our events and our different happenings uh, there on social media. Uh, our handle is at Native Pathways. Uh, we are on uh, Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Uh, so please be sure to give us a follow so that you can see content that is relevant to the different opportunities that you uh, may be eligible for. So with that said, I know that I sped through some of that, but I really think that the most valuable piece of this um, webinar is getting into a Q&A, right? Is, is hearing directly from you what questions do you have as you are engaging with your application or as you're getting ready to engage with it? Uh, I would love to answer those questions directly to you. As you're thinking about those questions, Delfina is gonna drop the link on the chat for how you can log on to Mentimeter. And she's also going to include the code that you need to enter on Mentimeter so that you can access uh, this board and start dropping your questions on there. As I start to see those questions appear on the screen, I'll simply start reading them off and answering them. While we wait for those questions to begin trickling in, I also want to let you know that we have a strong team of support here at the College Fund to help you with your application experience. My colleague, Kaylin, is one of those team members and she is really, really awesome and really easy to work with. Um, you can contact us via email or um, via phone number or by a phone. Um, so Kaylin is gonna drop our email and phone number here on the chat. 
Uh, we typically answer uh, those two mediums of communication Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. So please reach out. Don't feel like you have to navigate the application experience by yourself. We're here to help. So we have um, two options, basically. Yeah. Uh, we have the QA option here um, mm -hmm. in Zoom, where we have me and Kaylin are answering questions. Um, but feel free to answer these questions. And then I'll go ahead and start throwing out more questions in the Q&A that you can answer live. Perfect. Thank you for that. So mm -hmm. let's go with that first question. How many applications do you get and how many applications receive scholarships? That's a great question. So this year, we received well over 10,000 applications throughout the, uh, the cycle. So 10,000 applications. Out of those, we were able to award uh, about 3,500. So as you can see, we get a lot more applications that we can fund. That is true for every provider out there. Um, so I encourage you to please uh, take the time to craft uh, your responses uh, in a thoughtful manner. Um, one of the questions that I hear often from students is, who really is eligible? What kinds of majors are eligible? Or what, what do I need to be studying to be eligible? And in short, we award every type of degree program out there and every type of major out there. So whether you are somebody who is going to community college to seek their associate's degree in whatever major, we have scholarship programs for you. If you are going to a four-year school, private or public, and you are seeking your bachelor's degree, we have scholarship programs for you. If you are going to a public or private uh, institution to pursue an advanced degree, master's, PhD, um, medical uh, degrees, law school, we have scholarships for you. And we also have scholarships for students seeking credential degrees. So if you are looking to go to an accredited not-for-profit school to become a welder or a plumber, we have scholarships for you. So as you heard, every degree program we fund and every major we fund. So um, go ahead and apply if you plan to be uh, an enrolled student in the fall of 23 and the spring of 24. Uh, I see a good question here and it reads, if you have been awarded before, can you be awarded again? Absolutely. Um, if you were awarded this year, you need to submit a new application for the upcoming academic year to be eligible for a scholarship renewal. That's scenario one. Scenario two, if you were awarded a few years ago, and let's say that you completed your associate's degree back in 2016, you take your, you've been taking a break over the last few years, and then in the fall semester, you're getting ready to go back into a four-year school and get your bachelor's, please do apply. Um, so that we can consider you for a scholarship. So whether you've been awarded before or not, every student needs to submit an application for 23-24 to be considered for an award. What are some application tips so that our application will stand out among the many applicants? That's a great question. I really appreciate that. Um, so some application tips that I uh, often provide to students is don't be afraid to brag about who you are. Um, be sure to highlight all of your accomplishments, all of the things that you've been uh, able to achieve. And don't limit that to only the academic uh, sense of the word, right? Think broadly within your family, within your community, within your tribe, within work. What, what makes you unique, right? We really care about you. And so there is no one formula for how to describe that. Be thoughtful about how you describe um, what your education means to you and why that is important to you. And how do you wanna give back to the Native American community? I encourage all applicants, as you're working through the application, please read instructions carefully. You're gonna find help text in different parts of the application where, you, where we give you instructions on, on how to uh, think about some of these questions, right? So uh, read carefully and be sure to read the help text uh, because we give you little prompts as to what to think about when you're answering those different questions. Um, there's a question here about how do we win the great prizes advertised in the email sent? So that's a good question. Uh, my colleague Delfina is uh, monitoring the, the, um, the list of registrants and she will be following up with winners later. Is that right, Delfina? 
So we're actually going to, um, I'm going to post a survey and then based on that survey and the responses, okay. uh, you'll be entered into a drawing. Um, some of those prizes are gift cards um, and then also some American Indian College Fund swag. So yeah, um, awesome. so definitely complete the survey and you'll be entered automatically. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Yeah, so be sure to stay uh, until the end of the presentation because that survey will be live toward the end of our talk today. All right, so let's keep taking some more questions. Can we reuse parts of our application from last year? Absolutely, yes, definitely. However, I encourage you, if you applied last year and you were not selected, don't just copy and paste and move on. Take what you wrote last year as your starting spot, but make revisions, read it over, make sure that your thoughts are clear, that your ideas flow, and that you are happy with the way that you're coming across, right? Um, if you were not awarded last year, it could be that your overall application package could use some strengthening. So um, you can definitely use uh, some of the responses that you gave last year, but please take the time to review them and see how you can make it better and stronger. Good question, thank you for asking that. Um, there was a question here about uh, the spring uh, or spring scholarships for the current semester for spring 23. And unfortunately, you are no longer able to apply for scholarships for this spring semester. Uh, we've moved on to receive applications for the 23-24 academic year. Um, so if you plan to be enrolled next year, please submit an application before May 31st. That is a very important deadline so that we can consider you for an award for next year. Are there any scholarships for part-time students? If you're a part-time student, maybe that might change between now and next year. If you are a part-time student, I encourage you to go ahead and submit an application. And if that changes, go ahead and let us know so that we can update your file. This is especially true if you are a TCU enrolled student. Some of the scholarship opportunities that are awarded to students who are enrolled at a TCU don't have uh, a full-time enrollment requirement. Awesome question, thank you for asking that. Do these scholarships apply only to tribal colleges? Great question, and no. Uh, these scholarships apply to any accredited, not-for-profit, public, and or private school out there, right? So keep those criteria in mind. It has to be an accredited school that is not-for-profit, and it can be either public or private. So your, um, your local community college fits the, that criteria. Your local state schools meet that criteria. Some of your local private schools may also meet that criteria. If you think about Harvard, uh, Harvard Pepperdine, uh, Lewis and Clark, you know, all of those are private, but they're still not for profit and accredited. Um, some schools that are not, uh, that may be accredited, but if they're for profit, they won't be eligible. Some examples of those that you might have heard of, might have heard of are the University of Phoenix and Wyotech. Those schools are not, um, they may or may not be accredited, but if they're for profit, you won't be eligible to receive funding at those schools. I see a question here that says, if I am a senior in college for 23, 24, am I still eligible? Good question. So if you are in this webinar right now and you are a high school senior, I want you to apply for our scholarships now, right? This is your senior year and you are graduating this spring semester and you're gonna enroll in college in the fall. That's great. If you are a junior or a sophomore or a freshman, the correct time to apply for our scholarships is the spring semester of your senior year, because you will not be able to receive our funding until you have completed uh, high school or you've earned a GED and you are enrolling uh, in, the, in the following term, right? In the, uh, in, the spring, in the fall. Awesome question, thank you for that. As a freshman college student, would you use your high school GPA or your college GPA to apply for scholarships? Uh, if you are a current college student, you would need to use your college GPA and you would need to provide your college transcripts. Um, if you are currently a high school student, then you can provide your high school GPA um, or your high school transcript. Good question, thank you for asking that. Oh, 
Well, I think it's a fun question. Uh, I'll deviate from uh, all of your technical questions that we're answering to answer, what made the workers want to work at the American Indian College Fund? That's a great question. Uh, for me personally, uh, I've been in higher education my entire life. Um, and I started in college uh, working uh, as an RA. Um, and uh, then I went on to receive a, uh, a graduate degree uh, in counseling and student affairs. Um, life took me down the path of working in financial aid. And that was great, but I wanted to help students receive free money for college. Um, so I fell in love with uh, my role here as the scholarships manager. And I'm definitely in love with our mission uh, to help Native students uh, access uh, and receive higher education while lessening the debt amount. Um, and we do so in a really thoughtful way, which I think is really fantastic. So that's a really fun question. Thank you so much for asking that. All right. Hey, Delfina, have you seen any other uh, questions that are kind of speaking out to you that you want to bring up right now? Yes, actually. Um, so a lot of students are asking about um, if, well, basically, if this is a need-based scholarship. So for instance, one mm. student said, um, yeah. does EFC affect your chances of a scholarship? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of financial questions associated with this, with this scholarship. Oh my God, I love that question. This is a question from somebody who is thinking about college in a really wise way. So I appreciate mm -hmm. that. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know what need-based scholarships are, they are scholarships that you need to demonstrate having financial need. So there is two different kinds of scholarships out there. There is need-based and merit-based. A need-based scholarship requires that you provide information from your FAFSA, your federal application for federal financial aid. And based on that application, the federal government that, that determines if you have need or not. We are not one of those scholarships. We are merit-based, which is fantastic because that means that you are eligible depending or regardless of what your financial aid eligibility may be. So in other words, you might qualify for the most financial aid possible out there. You can apply. On the other hand, you may not qualify for any financial aid for a variety of reasons. That's okay. Our scholarships are, our scholarships are merit-based. That means that we look at your application in a competitive manner. And depending on who puts together the strongest applications that receive the highest scores, and those are the students that are awarded, which is again, why I encourage you to put together thoughtful re uh, reflection responses because our scholarship application process is competitive or selection is competitive. That was a great question, Dofina. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, one thing that I do want to mention is uh, this session is being recorded. So what's going to happen with the recording is we'll essentially uh, take it, put it on our YouTube page, as well as any other social media pages. I'll also send a follow up email to all of the registrants um, who you know, registered for this webinar with the links uh, that we mentioned in the chat. So all of that information will be available. And, you know, feel free to share it with your networks, with students, with uh, your cousins, your nieces, your nephews, your aunties, your grandmas, everybody, uh, because, yeah. you know, that's what we're uh, hoping to, to do is to increase our scholarship pool, um, because there's so much money out there, you know, and everyone should access it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Thank you for mentioning that. All right. So let's go back to the questions here on the screen, because I've seen a couple more that have kind of trickled in or that have caught my eye. Uh, one of them says, what about college juniors and seniors? Yes, you are eligible and you should apply. As long as you plan to be a full-time enrolled student in the fall of 23 or this and the spring of 24, you should apply. If right now you are a college senior, and you're gonna become what we call super seniors, which means that you have to take a fifth year perhaps, or maybe a sixth year. If you're one of those folks, please go ahead and apply. But if on the other hand, you are currently a college senior and you're graduating in the spring, don't apply unless you have plans to go on to a, uh, an advanced degree in the fall. Uh, but if you're wrapping up college this semester, you won't be eligible for our awards because you're not gonna be enrolled next year. So we won't have anything to disperse to you. College juniors definitely should apply because you're going to become a senior next year. And um, so you'll be enrolled and you should be eligible. So that's a great, 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 great question. Um, 
So um, students are asking questions about uh, the amount that's typically awarded in a scholarship, um, one, and then two, uh, if they can receive multiple scholarships with the one application they submit. That's a good question. That's a good question. So on average, our awarded student receives about $3,000 for the academic year. Uh, whatever amount you are awarded, it gets split up in two halves. You get the first disbursement at the beginning of the fall semester and the second disbursement at the beginning of the spring semester. Upon disbursement, we cut you a check and we send it to the financial aid office at your school. The financial aid office at your school determine how those funds are to be used. Those funds may be applied toward tuition and fees, room and board, or any other qualifying educational expenses. They may also refund the funds to you but it is the financial aid office at your school that determines how your scholarship money ought to be used. Um, the second question, can I receive more than one scholarship? Yes, but only if you are a TCU enrolled student. If you are going to a state school or a community college or a private school, you will only be eligible for one award. If you are going to a tribal college or a tribal uh, university, you may be eligible for up to two uh, scholarships. That's a great question. Thank you for asking that, Delfina. Did I answer that question correctly? Did I miss something or entirely? No, I think that that, that was um, perfect. Great, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a question here that I'm looking about consideration of scholarships for elder, um, elderly students. Um, so our scholarships do not have a maximum or minimum age, right? Um, so if you are, a super achiever and you're graduating high school early and you're 17 and you're going into college next year uh, in the fall while still being uh, 17, you are eligible, your age doesn't matter. And if on the other hand, you are somebody who is uh, maybe later in life and you're going back to college to pursue your education, please do apply because we do not give a preference or we don't take away, take away points depending on your age. Um, so all students regardless of age are eligible to apply. That's a great question. It's a good question. Is it mandatory to apply each semester or is there an application that works for the entire year? Great question. When you complete an application that works for the entire academic year, right? So the application that you are gonna complete by May 31st, that is going to work for both the fall 2023 and the spring 2024. If you are, if your school is on the quarter system, then yeah, it'll cover fall, winter and uh, spring quarter of the upcoming academic year. That's a very good question. Juan, do you have any uh, advice for middle schoolers to help them prepare? Ooh, middle schoolers thinking ahead of the game. I love that. You know, I think my biggest advice to middle schoolers um, is start early. Um, if I were to go back in time and I know what I know now about the scholarship game, um, and, and, I, and I were in high school, I would apply to as many scholarships as I'm eligible for. Before I apply to anything, I want to understand clearly if I am eligible or not. Uh, we, every year we receive a number of applications from students who are not eligible. Um, and um, that's a bummer uh, because we would love to consider them. But if you are going to a for-profit school, right? If you're going to Wyotech or if you're going to University of Phoenix, unfortunately, we cannot award you. So be sure to understand the eligibility criteria for whatever you're applying for um, before you engage with the application. And uh, focus on on your on having a holistic college, holistic high school experience. Many people think that to receive an award, a scholarship award, they need to be a track star with a 4.0 and all the AP classes and all that stuff. That is far from true, right? Because those students, they exist and they're out there, but they're not, they're rare, right? They're not that common. What scholarship providers look for are high school students with a well-rounded background, right? Folks who have been uh, putting in the effort academically, uh, students who have been involved outside of the classroom, in high school, in the community, in their tribes, uh, if they have work. So all of those different experiences that you get outside of the classroom are really, really valuable, not only for your own development and growth, but also for when you're applying for, uh, for scholarships. So become a well-rounded high school student. Don't try to be perfect because that is a bar that very few people can actually achieve. 
is there someone who can support me in finding other scholarship opportunities? That is a great question. We have a link on our website that can connect you to other scholarship providers. My colleague Delfina or Kaylin is gonna drop that link on the chat soon. Go on that link and then you can find all of the different scholarship providers that we are aware of, that we have vetted and verified and check them out. Understand that every scholarship- I will, oh. um, uh, just Sorry, to sorry to interrupt. Uh, we're actually going to have a scholarship session um, mm. with other, um, other organizations. So for instance, mm. Cobell, um, oh, great. Native Forward. So we're hosting that session soon. Um, mm. Again, follow our social media. Um, I'm in charge of our Native Pathways. And so mm -hmm. I try to post often and provide reminders. You can also go to our chat um, and sign up for the newsletter and we'll send out information there as well. Um, but the best place to get updates as far as our events is to go to our social media page, particularly Instagram. Follow us there and you'll see our events. Thank you for, for adding that. Yes, so that this is a great example as to why following us on social media is super awesome because you can get insight into those little events. Um, okay, let's keep going through some questions here. Are there summer scholarships for full summer part-time students? Um, last year, we offered our first round of summer scholarships, but those are only available to students that we fund throughout the academic year, right? So in order to be eligible for our summer scholarship opportunities, you need to be a, a scholarship recipient throughout the academic year. Um, and there is no need to submit an additional application. When that opportunity becomes available, we will reach out to eligible students and tell them how to apply. I also see another really good question that I've actually heard a couple of different times. That is, are you eligible if you have been incarcerated and have a record? Answer to that is absolutely yes, definitely. Uh, if that is your case, please uh, take the time and submit the application. We'd love to learn more about you, what makes you unique, the experiences that you've had. Uh, having been incarcerated and having a record does not preclude you from being eligible for our scholarship awards. So please engage with our application. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the question is, why are we asked the FAFSA question on the application? Mm. Thank you. That is a great question. I'm glad you guys asked that because you might be wondering, well, why do you want to know about my FAFSA information if you are merit-based and not need-based? That's a great question. We ask for that information for research purposes, right? We have a very strong uh, research uh, department here at the College Fund, and we are really interested in learning more about the types of students that we are funding, right? So if uh, a student goes on and completes uh, the application and they provide us uh, their FAFSA information, we are looking at his information in addition to everyone else that provided that information. Not just, we're not singling him out. So we're just looking at the composite, at the makeup of our applicants and awarded students. Um, the EFC uh, is a great uh, data point for us to learn more about who is applying and who is receiving scholarships. Whether you have applied for FASPA or not, and regardless of what your EFC is, you are eligible. Having said that, please, 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 please take the time and complete the FASPA every year. You might be leaving free money on the door if you don't complete the FASPA. So in addition to completing a ton of scholarship applications out there, right? You also wanna complete the FASPA every year. All of that money gets stacked. And this is how you end up going to school for free and don't rack up any student debt. If you've heard of the Pell Grant, if you're from California, you can also get different kinds of grants. Different states have different kinds of grants. All of those grants, you get a scholarship from the College Fund, you get a scholarship from Cobell, and then you get a scholarship from ACES. All of that can stack, right? And it adds up to pay for your all of your different costs of attendance. So please complete the FAST by every year. That's a great question, Devin. I'm so glad you brought that up and asked that. That's great. So this one is asking if they can apply if they're pursuing a second bachelor's degree. Yeah, absolutely. So if you already hold a degree, whatever that degree may be, um, you can definitely apply if you're pursuing an additional degree. Okay. Um, so yeah, great question. And what about students who are undecided about their colleges? They're asking mm. if they need to know which college they're attending before they apply. That's a good question. You know. The, 
the platform that we use to manage our application uh, presents us with the challenge that once a student submits the application, they cannot go back and change their answers. They need to contact us, they can email us or give us a call so that we can make updates for them on the back end of the platform. So I think most students, even if they haven't made a final decision, everyone's got that top choice and then their backups. My recommendation is list your top choice right now. And after May 31st, or whenever you hear back, if you don't get into that top choice or you decide to go with a different school, give us a call or send us an email so that we can update your file. But that is very important because unfortunately, you cannot go back and make the update yourself. But I wouldn't let that prevent you from submitting the application. Like I said, just go ahead and list the school that you are most likely to attend. And if that changes, just simply give us a call or shoot us an email and we can do uh, the update on the back end for you. It takes two seconds and it's really easy for us. That's a great question. I really appreciate you asking that. And let's see, so are there, so this one specifically asks if there are scholarships for art majors, um, mm -hmm. but I guess that question could be, are there scholarships for specific majors? Definitely. So we have a really wide portfolio of scholarships. Um, as I mentioned earlier, when you complete our one application, you get you will be considered for the over 200 different scholarship opportunities or scholarship awards that we have. And within that portfolio, we award every major out there, every major from STEM to art to humanities, um, every major out there. And we also award every degree type. If you are pursuing a certificate degree, an associate's, bachelor's, master's, PhD, uh, JD, uh, uh, an MD, um, every, every degree type, we award all of them. So my recommendation is regardless of your major or the degree type that you're gonna be pursuing in the fall of 2023 and the spring of 2024, submit your application because regardless of what those two factors are, you are uh, you are eligible for our awards regardless of what your major or your degree is. That's a great question, Dofina. And Dofina, I want to be mindful of time because uh, I know we're running up on we have about eight minutes left. So I think we can take a few more questions and then we can uh, run the survey if you'd like to do that. Yeah. So um, just a couple of questions mm -hmm. here. Uh, if you're not eligible for any federal financial aid or money received through FAFSA, can you get the scholarship? Yes, yes, absolutely. Once mm -hmm. again, our awards are not need-based, so mm -hmm. you can apply for our scholarships whether or not you receive federal or state funding. Mm -hmm. so. And then, um, let's see, as far as the award amounts, you could be mm -hmm. awarded up to $3,000. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Um, you, you may be awarded a little more than that, a little okay. less. The average award amount is three thousand, um, but that's an average, right? So some folks get a little more than that, some folks get a little bit less than that. It fluctuates, um, but yeah, on average, it's around three k for the academic year. So you would get fifteen hundred in the fall and fifteen hundred in the spring. Um, but we have some awards that that definitely uh, uh, produce um, that give students a little bit more than the three thousand for the year. Okay. And then someone um, mentioned our Instagram page needs attention, um, but it's it's at Native Pathways. It's not Insta College Fund. That's that's another site. So our webpage is specifically for students, and that's at Native Pathways. Totally. Um, I want to answer a question here that I, I see at the bottom of my screen uh, that says, "Is there a cutoff for the amount of credits I can have?" And the answer to that is no. Uh, you know, students take many different ways, uh, many different paths to get their degrees. And education is more than just getting to that finish line and getting that degree. It really is a journey. So because of that, there are students out there that complete their degrees, their bachelor's degrees, for example, in four years. There are some other students that take six years, eight years. Stuff happens, right? And so sometimes you have to take a break from school. Sometimes you have semesters that are not so great academically. Um, and we understand that. Um, and so because of that, there is no quota for the amount of credits that you can have uh, to be eligible. Dofina, we are we have five more minutes. Should I take another question or do you want to start rolling out the survey? 
Um, a lot of students have questions about uh, when they are notified of their awards. Mm, yes, yes, great question. Awesome, thank you for that, yes. So if you submit an application by May 31st, that is the that is the day that I want to imprint on you today. May thirty first is is the golden date, right? You will receive an uh, a scholarship award notification from us, telling you, yeah, you were awarded, or unfortunately, you were not selected. But you will hear from us by the end of July. After May thirty first, the the portal remains open, and you can submit an application. Um, but your chances of receiving an award after May thirty first decrease substantially substantially. So my question to you is why wait after May 31st? Why not submit it by May 31st when you know you stand the strongest chance to, to be awarded? If you submit after May 31st, you'll hear from my team on a, on a, on a rolling basis um, every two or three weeks. Um, but please, I, I know that you're going to be one of those great students who's going to submit by May 31st. So you can expect to hear from us with an award notification by the end of July. Good question, Delfina. Anything else? Juan, it's Kaylin. I have a question in the Q&A. Um, someone yeah. wants you to speak on um, the specific full ride scholarships like the Harvard Law and those specific scholarships, um, as well as the um, the cadence that they're on. So how often they're awarded. Gotcha. So we th that's a good question. And so this is we only have one of those um, opportunities, and that's the uh, the Harvard Law Scholarship. And so what this award does is that it gives one student who is going to the Harvard Law program a full ride for the duration of their JD degree, which is three years. That program only awards one student, so it's on a cadence of every three years. We're gonna start looking for recipients or applicants rather for that program uh, in next, next spring, the spring of 24. Um, but you know, if you're going to go to pursue a JD and it may or may not be at Harvard, submit an application. Because if you are not selected for the Harvard Law Program, because you might not, because even if you go to the Harvard Law Program, there may be other applicants who are more qualified or who are selected over you, or you might go to a different program, program elsewhere, still submit an application. Because even if you don't get that really awesome full ride to Harvard Law, you might receive a different scholarship award that is going to give you free money to go and pursue your degree. So once again, my recommendation is always submit on a scholarship application. Um, and we will match you up to the scholarship that pays the most based on your eligibility criteria, right? Um, that's a good question. Thank you for asking, Kaylin. Anything else? Juan, another great question. How do I know mm -hmm. if my college is eligible? Um, basically, how do I know that my college is nonprofit and accredited? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Yes. Uh, think about this website. I'll write it down. Uh, if you um, if you have paper or open up a new tab on your browser, go to collegenavigator.org. Uh, uh, I think it's that or is it that net, Kaylin? Do you recall? It's one of those two. Collegenavigator.org or collegenavigator.org. I just put it in the chat for our students that are able to copy it and I'll answer this question in the Q&A as well. Thank you. Yeah. So go to that website that Kaylin put on the chat. And then enter the name of your school. Um, you'll find it there, click on it, and then it gives you all of the stats. And on those stats, it tells you if it's for profit or not, and if it's accredited or not. Uh, the school can be private or public, that's fine, but it needs to be not for profit and accredited. Thank you for that question, Kaylin. Delfina? And I just wanted to say, um, everyone, please take the survey so that you'll automatically be entered into a drawing um, for a gift card or um, American Indian College Fund swag. And yeah, we'd really appreciate your um, your participation in that. Yeah, thank you so much. So Delfina dropped that link on the chat. I'm gonna start wrap now, wrapping up now. So I'm gonna close the Zoom session in a minute or two. So right now go to the chat and click on that link because once I terminate or once I end the Zoom session, you won't be able to click on that link. So go to the chat right now and click on that link. Um, complete the survey. It'll take you five minutes and uh, you might win some awesome stuff. Um, but like I said at the beginning, I know that it may be past dinner time, during dinner time, or before dinner time, depending on where you are in the country. 
So from wherever you are joining us, thank you very, very much for your time and engagement this afternoon. It was a pleasure to uh, hang out with all of you and uh, tell you more about our amazing and awesome scholarship opportunities. Uh, we're excited to get to know you more. And so be sure to complete your application on May 31st. Um, be sure to go to our website and find our contact information. Don't go through this process alone. We want to help you, okay? So contact us, email us, or give us a call if you have any questions or need any help with your application. Yeah, and for those of you um, who came in late or were asking if this is going to be recorded, um, again, we're going to have this um, in our youth, on our YouTube page and social media pages. Um, I'll also send a follow-up email with the recording as well as the links that we dropped in the chat today um, and uh, contact information for our scholarships team. Yeah, awesome. Thank you for that, Delfina. Kaylin, any closing words? Nope, just trying to answer the last four questions in the Q&A. Um, you guys had really great questions, so thanks so much for that. Awesome. All right, well, thank you so much for uh, or your help, Delfina and Kaylin. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close the session now. Uh, once again, thank you all very, very much for joining us this afternoon. Please be sure to submit your application by May 31st. Delfina, do you I have something else to add? No, I was just going to say that Kaylin was answering um, so oh, that's right. Questions. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, uh, let me ask you one more question on the chat so, to give Kaylin some time to wrap up. Yeah. Yeah. So, the link is in the chat function. Um, what if you take a scholarship through this process and look into the companies ourselves to apply for scholarships, or is that possible? Um, can you can you repeat that question for me? I think um, what they mean is, um, can they accidentally double apply for these? Like, if the sponsor is Ford. For example, if they mm -hmm. also separately apply for a different Ford scholarship, is that going to mess them up? Gotcha. No, not really. Um, so, you know, a big company like Ford, they might fund different scholarship programs, one through their own company and one through the American Indian College Fund. They're independent from each other, right? Um, and so you can apply for all of the scholarships out there. Uh, we have partnerships with other scholarship providers and that we're friends with them and we know what they're doing and we learn from each other. Uh, but uh, we don't share information or applicant information with them, and they don't share their applicant information with us, right? So all the scholarship providers will not know if you've applied with us, and we will not know if you've applied with them. Mm -hmm. uh, one more. Is mm -hmm. there eligibility for registered tribal members who are also military veterans already enrolled in college? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so... If you are an enrolled tribal member or a descendant of one, you are eligible, as long as you meet those other handful of criteria for the GPA and the type of school that you're going to. Um, we are looking to create more programs to uh, support um, our um, military veterans. Uh, but whether you're a veteran or not, if you meet all of the basic criteria for um, our scholarships, please submit an application because you are eligible. So I'm going to look to my team here. You guys, let me know when we are uh, kind of in the green, getting cut up on questions in the chat, and uh, we can start to wrap it up. Yeah, and I think we're I think we're all done. Um, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and send up a follow up email to everyone. Again, um, people are asking for you like links and all sorts of stuff. So we'll send a follow up email with all the information that we provided here, um, and as as well as the link. So yeah, we'll be all set to go. Awesome. All right, everyone. So two seconds right now, go to the chat, click on the survey link uh, right now, ch chat survey. Uh, be sure to complete it. It takes five minutes so that you can be uh, considered for some awesome stuff. Uh, and uh, be sure to submit your application by May 31st. Uh, we look forward to considering you for an award for next year and reach out to my team if you need any help. With that said, thank you for your time tonight and have a great night. Take care.